So Project Cars 3 has been out for a little while now and uh, Slightly Mad Studios told us that Project Cars 3 would be optimised towards controllers. So I thought the time had come to have a little run out with the controllers, see what was best. As you can see I've got a quite a, a meaty selection of controllers that I've run the hot laps with. The laps that are being set at the moment, the, the lap 1 laps, are all from a standing start so these aren't going to be particularly impressive. Uh, the Horionics Plus seems to be the fastest so far, um, but the orders themselves are randomised uh, by way of a deck of cards. Although these first runs really won't be the ultimate times, uh, it could give us some idea as to just which controllers are strong which ones aren't. Now the uh, track limits were set up as strict, which means that while I'm pushing the cars as hard as I physically can, mistakes could happen and a car could lose control, it could pass over the track limits and ultimately that would leave us with no time. I decided that was a good rule uh, because again staying within track limits is all about controller, uh, it's about how you're able to gather up understeer or oversteer and such like. So I was happy to not have laps countered by those little issues. I just noticed the Sony DualShock 2 at this point just dropped up into uh, top spot followed by the 6-axis. The 6-axis of course massively strong in the Gran Turismo Sport Controller Wars series uh, that is on this channel. A fabulous controller. Here we have the, the Hori Wired Mobile Controller uh, which hopped up, in the, up there into third. So there's an interesting spread. I mean it's about six and a half seconds between the six axis at the front and the Dell home keyboard at the back. That keyboard really just in there for um, a little bit of fairness, a little bit of reference. The Microsoft Xbox One controller there was really charging along. The GameSir T4W, we know that was very strong at the start of the uh, Gran Turismo test as well. That's now right up there. They we're pushing a 153 from a standing start at the moment, which isn't a, a bad lap from a standing start, to be honest with you. There are some controllers you're going to see not getting times. These are going to be the ones that have had times disallowed. We're on to the second lap now, so these cars are a rolling start at this point. These are going to be where we see the ultimate times. That's by the uh, Nintendo Sitch. Pro controller, it's a bit of a typo there. Uh, jumps up to the top spot at 152.8. I'm pretty sure that's going to be beaten since the game's uh, got a much faster lap in from a standing start. Yeah, the Easy SMX, that's a new controller we've got in for controller wars and controller comparisons. Again, it's only a 152, so I'd expect much faster times than that. Here we've got the Thrustmaster Moderna 360 U pad, that's another new one for these videos. The power A here, slipping into second, that's always been a, uh, a very consistently strong controller. But here we go, the 6 axis just devastates the top time, goes 1.4 seconds faster with a 151.063. So the 6, oh no, the, the Geotech VX4 is another new controller, that's uh, gone even faster, going to the 150s now. So we're really starting to see the ultimate pace now, and uh, we're starting to see how slow the slow controllers are, how fast the fast ones are. The Xbox 360 controller there jumping up into second place. Um, yeah, so we're, we're seeing a, a bunch of controllers all in the same region, really. Uh, and it's going to be between those ultimately towards the end. There's the PDP Afterglow, that was a, a strong one for Gran Turismo. Up there into four. Still nobody touching that uh, Geotech VX4 at the top. Not a controller I'd expect to see going that particularly fast. But it's it's holding its own now. We're into lap three. Uh, still the Dell Home keyboard very slow. There's some controllers that haven't yet times in. Uh, such as the DualShock 4 having issues with track limits. Uh, the Razor Black Widow. Logitech G29, strange to see that out there, but again, there, there were issues with the G29 controlling the car, 
uh, I can definitely vouch for this game being geared towards controllers. Great to see the Sony DualShock in third place. That is the DualShock 1 from the PlayStation 1, uh, which was mapped through a, a Titan 1 adapter. Had some great fun testing that. The 6 axis, which is very strong, into the 150s. Oh, we've got a new leader. It's the Hori Wide Mini Controller. 150.009, so that's 9 one thousandths away from being uh, sub 150. That's a pretty good time. Also, the Microsoft Xbox One controller getting ahead of the Geotech VX4, but still around four tenths off the Hori Wired Mini. And great to see the DualShock 4 finally putting a time in, although it's not particularly fast. Uh, Logitech G29 here. Uh, wow, not doing particularly well. As I said, I had some real control problems. Uh, losing the back end constantly. Whereas with the controllers, the cars just felt planted. This, of course, the Aston Martin V12. It's not a uh, racing modified car. Easy SMX there. Jumping up into second, right behind the Hori Wired Mini controller. And the, uh, the Racing Wheel Apex finally getting on the board. Uh, managing almost two seconds faster than the G29. Uh, hardly surprising if you've seen our Hori Racing Wheel Apex review, you'll know that the, the Racing Wheel Apex does feel a lot like a, a controller rather than a steering wheel. So the Hori Wired Mini Controller has gone sub 150. Uh, no other controller has. And you can see the uh, the state of the Razer card there, uh, because the Razer keyboard really struggling with control. Uh, keyboard's not very well with this particular game. The G29 improves, but not enough to get ahead of the Racing Wheel Apex. Bit of a shocker there. It's the, the final set of valid hot laps just coming in now. The uh, U-pad improved for Thrustmaster. Didn't threaten any top runners. Power Ray also quite uh, quite level, you know, in the middle. But the Hori Wired Mini Controller actually improves at this point, uh, 149.356. So that's that's pretty cool. That's uh, almost a second faster than the Easy SMX. Absolutely stamping its dominance. Almost though this game was made for that controller. Absolutely fabulous. Now you'll see, although this is the final hot lap, the uh, PlayStation Remote Play didn't set a time. Uh, that was just too uncontrollable. I couldn't get it around without going over track limits. And the Havoc Mechanical Keyboard and SciTech USB Gamepad both had mapping issues, so they didn't even get a, a lap in. Ultimately, the fastest car was the Hori Wired Mini Controller car. So that is my pick of best controller for playing on uh, Project Cars 3. Of course if you're playing on PC or PS4 that's fine. If you're not, if you're playing on the Xbox then stick with the uh, official Microsoft Xbox One controller. Uh, if your budget can't stretch the Hori Wide Mini Controller or the Microsoft Xbox One controller, the Easy SMX KC8236 is a very inexpensive controller and will work just fine. Thank you for watching this. Uh, like if you like, subscribe if you want. Hit up the Patreon link at the bottom of this video and uh, that'll really help to support Controller Wars and other controller comparison videos. Thanks for now. Bye-bye.